I'm here, I'm here. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all are like, what? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Today's going to be a day of just giving free readings. You're going to be like, I love you. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of cancellations or reschedules. Someone who wants to have a reading after the 5th of October. And I mailed out so many of y'all's um, uh, things. Those of you who have ordered um, the $100 purchase. I put all of your stuff together in your beautiful castle box. Your art is right here. Inside is a beautiful mushroom purse with the gifts that you were given and some secret surprises and just made it really fun and magical for you. So that's what I was doing today. I was like mailing y'all stuff, getting a cabinet ready to take and, and have that one delivered. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. It's like, oh my gosh. So I wasn't even going to go live today. I was like, okay, um, maybe it's not meant to be, but here I am because I feel like maybe somebody needs a reading. So let me get us on a place right here. Oh, white rabbit started playing right here. That's hilarious. Okay. Let's see here. And then the song was in my head by Elvis Presley or Frank Sinatra, My Way. And, and I was like, okay, somebody needs to hear this. Let me put this on here real quick. There we go. I don't even know this song. It's old. That's all I know. All right, let's turn on a little fairy light. Peekaboo. Hello. Hello. Is it time to dance? Grumpy Bear is over here judging us. He will always be there to balance out all the things that we think are true. If you have a jerk in your life who's trying to tell you that what you're thinking or believing isn't true, don't worry. They're only there to push you to your center. Because when we fall off into the rabbit hole and we believe 100% and we start speaking in... Um, What's the word? When we start speaking in such a way that it is, um, what's the word? I know the word. When we start speaking in, um, <laughs> yeah, right? Somebody says time to tinker. When we start speaking in such a way that it is like absolute, oh, when we start speaking in absolute truths, that everything is in absolutes, then it's a we're fools. We uh, the truth of the matter is is that truth can change and shift like a kaleidoscope. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the platform today. Have you been outside today, guys? Have you? There's going to be a point when we're going to be so telepathic that no one's going to be able to lie ever. Immediately, I thought or had a thought in my head, yes, but not like not like a like a sanctuary or a ceremony or a prayerful time. Just just went outside for a minute. I think every day, guys, we need to be doing our prayer, our activations, meditations, listening to really cool high vibe stuff and um, maintaining our zero point energy. Don't let me speak in absolutes because then you guys can start being mean, mean to me like Grumpy Bear. That's fine. We'll play Mean Mommy. You guys can be Mean Mommy. Put me in timeout. That's what TikTok does to me. TikTok is my Mean Mommy. It's Miss Hannigan. We love you, Miss Hannigan. No, we don't. Little girls, little girls, night and day I live, sleep, and breathe them. I don't know if you guys ever watched. Annie. Little girls, little girls. I'm an ordinary woman with feelings. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So just give me your first name, please. And I do try to pick my subscribers first. So I'll let, I'll let Grumper Bear tell you that. Um, he, um, subscribers first, guys. Yeah. I'll let him be the jerk for me. <laughs> All 
All right. Yes, 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 yes. Mads, M-A-D-S. I saw you the minute I looked at my phone. So that's usually how it works with me. I see everyone's name and then I see someone's name and then that's you. Mads. There we go. Um, so this song, My Way, is could be positive or negative. Um, we do need to do our thing our own way. Not how religious religious leaders tell you. Not how a guru or a shaman tells you. Not how any kind of written word tells you. Your way could be so unique and so beautiful that to forsake it would be a shame. So for instance, let's say that you're a glass artist and you make this most beautiful glass art that you have no idea is magical. You think it's just beautiful. And you decide, well, I shouldn't do this. I don't make enough money doing it. Um, although it does make me dance like a ballerina and makes me really happy, other people don't seem to find the power in it or the joy in it or the magical child in it. And so you give it up. And so this song, My Way, is an encouragement that your way is a good way. And that you, whatever you do make that is your passion, songwriting, singing, a theater, writing, acting, making jewelry, whatever it is, is your magic. Keep doing it. Don't stop. So that's what this song is. And that's the song that was in my head. So let's go ahead and go forward. I'm going to pull a card for you as well. And that is partnership. All right. And now the end is near and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll state it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full each and every highway oh, but more much more than this I did it my way regrets I've had a few but then again too few to mention And may I say, 
man what has he got if not for yourself then he has not to say the things that you truly feel and not the words of one who kneels the record shows and I took my blows but I did it Your hand is not your hand, one thing. You are doing it your way. But you need to know that greater is spirit within you than you are in the world. Have faith in that. Have faith that it is your higher self who impregnates you with ideas. It is your higher self who makes you pregnant with inspiration. It is your higher self who tells you to look up when you're looking down while driving. It's your higher self who tells you to turn on the TV right in the moment when you, need, when you need an answer. You are doing it your way. However, be aware that your hand is multidimensional. You have many hands on many dimensions, and these hands can be accessed to do great things, including levitation, telekinesis, attaining the stone the philosopher's stone and the pearl of wisdom it's called the pearl of attainment actually so i had a hard time seeing your face because i see a bearded man i see a crown that says mama i see the god ball i see skulls but don't think that's bad skull island is connected to atlantis and lemuria i see a three-faced goddess hecate or hecate however you pronounce her name and this your your higher self is is shape-shifting talking to you or telling you that that your animal is protected. So your animal right here is under an umbrella. And the umbrella was a balloon. And the balloon popped, which was Ball. I will explain who Ball is and what Ball symbolizes. But your animal right now is a deer. Doe a deer, a female deer, which means the divine feminine. And you absolutely have a shape-shifting face here that's going around like a merry-go-round. So I see a face, it's a man. Then it goes around, I see a woman. It goes around, I see a young woman, an, a middle-aged woman, and then an old woman. And it's going around like a merry-go-round. And this is how the earth spins. This is how the energies shift. Sometimes we're in the male energy. Sometimes we're in the female energy. Sometimes we're getting messages. And all of it, gives you the hands to do things. So your you had an animal that was, I would say, I don't know if it's, so you know how Harry Potter's higher self was the stag who saved him from the Dementors? Well, the Dementors are water gods. Baal is a water god who is a rain god. He's the god of the rain. Dagon the fish god is his father. Catholicism 
actually worships Dagon the fish god. If you look into it, they do. And Dagon's son is Baal, and Baal is the god of child sacrifice, suffering. So if you had Baal in your midst, and it was like a Dementor, and your stag showed up, what you have to do to defeat this Baal energy is expecto patronum. You have to maintain joy. This means you should be listening to comedy every day. Baal is about suffering and wants you to mirror and and speak the language of suffering. So if you get around family members who are constantly suffering and then you yourself start to suffer, you need to be aware that there's a battle for suffering for the gods of suffering. All the gods of sacrifice and suffering are battling many of you guys right now. And so that balloon that was Baal was popped and turned into an umbrella and it's a protection for you. So so you have an elephant over your head and that's very good. This shape-shifting um, person that I'm seeing here um, has a, a dead fish over their face, which represents Pisces is dead. What does that mean? The water gods are dead. They're not supposed to be brought up into this age of Aquarius, which means our actions, thoughts, and words should mirror Aquarius, not, not the gods of suffering. What does this mean? Plainly, to speak it plainly, don't bring the Voldemort into Hogwarts. Don't think about it. Don't look back. Don't have low self-worth. Don't have self-importance. Don't look in the mirror of your lower self. It will bring the Medusa. And when you look into the mirror of the Medusa, it'll push you back into the world of suffering again. So now that I said that, things are becoming a little more clear. Um, yeah, so here is your deer like this. And... Yeah, so so you have the black Isis on you. So you, you not only have um, Hecate, the three-faced goddess, but when we have the black Isis, this is a time in our lives that we must understand the black Isis. And the black Isis, there's this person behind here. They look like this. It is a male energy, and we'll just go like this. And they have a Russian hat on. They look Russian. Um, uh, so this means ice, ISIS. There, this is ice. And um, so there's three faces here, male, female, female, but one is a child. This is the divine marriage of, of the child. So basically it's kind of like you're in the... Um, you're on um, the show Frozen and you're walking into the ice with your horse and you're like, show yourself. So you're in a place of seeing who you are. You're going through a divine marriage and I will read to you what the, what the um, black Isis represents. There's a white Isis and a black Isis. And this is really all about your invisibility. So that when you receive this symbol, this is like the Deathly Hollow symbol. And it's about that you are being hunted by gods who represent suffering. And you have to have the Deathly Hollow here. And there's a secret behind maintaining your Deathly Hollow. Um, it, is, it is a trinity. So Harry Potter, Hermione Weasley. Um, it is about thought, word, and action, and zero-point energy, which makes you invisible to those who haunt you. I don't know how else to say it, guys. There's a lot going on in the world today. So you are a diviner. You are into divination. Um, and you are really good at it, and you should be practicing it all the time. You're very good at it. You have the divine hand, they say. But, you're, but one thing that they say is your hand isn't just your hand. You are the hand of ascended masters. Powerful, powerful 
beautiful beings who are immortal and want you to step into that power. All right, why this man looks Russian, I couldn't tell you right yet. It does say Lucy. So the L is on Isis and then UCY is over here. And then it's almost like it's saying, you'll see why. You'll see why, meaning wait a minute. <laughs> so they talk in a weird way. So what what is going on with the world and with many of you guys is if you don't build your own chariot of fire, your own um, slay, your own... Um, Merkaba with the two triangles. If you don't, then the Santa will take it from you. So you need to be the one in your own chariot. You need to do it your way. Otherwise, there's going to be gods out there who are going to take it and you're going to end up doing it their way. Your Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer needs to be free from working for gods. They need to be with you. So that bearded man is the Santa from supposedly Russia with that Russian hat right there. But so you have an anointing bottle here. And this means that you're you are in, a, in the midst of having an awakening, which I call an anointing. And this anointing bottle is called the crucible. And it's. There's, so on the seat of this, um, Santa Slate is a scarecrow. And this means that your false self is being diminished from you. And your much stronger, higher self is being activated. Contracts. Sign a contract of zero and one. Um, perfection. Perfected man. So this Black Isis, I'm going to read to you about Black Isis. All right, so the Black Isis is a secret temple or chamber that resides as the veiled or concealed one. When we're talking about the veiled or the concealed one, this is about death, but it's the deathless death. It is you dodging death through your awakening, your knowledge of what's really going on in the world. And shamans know how to dodge death. You're going to learn how to dodge death. People who are initiates and are adepts of hidden truth know about Black Isis. Not from the point of view of Egyptology. Under the influence of the Egyptian school, Isis had absorbed and become and come to represent the functions and attributes of all the other goddesses of the ancient Egyptian pantheon. But later, in the days of the Roman Empire, her cult spread further and she absorbed the attributes of all the other goddesses in the empire. The name of the river Thames in London, for example, means the broad Isis. And above the city of Oxford, the same river is simply called the Isis. One of the most beautiful invocations to come down to us from this period is by Lucius. Oh, Lucy. 
Okay, so this is where we're getting into the name Luce, Lucy or Lucy or Lucius. All right, so so um, a Roman priest of Isis. So this is a Roman priest of Isis. His name is Lucius, L-U-C-I-O-U-S. And, and it's funny how they use the name, oh, you'll see Lucy, Lucius. Okay. Um, and he was a Roman priest of Isis. And he wrote a book called The Golden Ass and describes Isis as the only one goddess. In alchemy, Isis is called the world soul, the universal subconscious reservoir. She also represents the deepest stratum of the personal unconscious of the individual that holds all the subconscious memories and karmic traces from all previous incarnations. So basically a hidden realm or room where all the answers are there, which is you, you within you, you have all those within you. So you become a magical aid agent that awakens these ancient truths that hatch open like eggs waiting to be hatched with this Isis energy inside of you. This is what I this is why the song My Way was fit, was sent to you today. So, let's get into it. She she represents magical fiery power. I Osiris was raised from the dead from three-dimensional consciousness to become the Horus king, which is the Christ, the hawk or the gold, the hawk of gold. To symbol of the to symbolize the super subconscious or the super consciousness state of enlightenment. The black Isis is that aspect of the universe that draws the freely distributed energy, chakma, and consecrates it into units. It is a passive, it is passive in the sense that it doesn't originate the energy but collects and holds the, the energy into form. Black Isis is veiled because energy is veiled within form. Until various scientific instruments were invented, however, most of humanity didn't know that all was energy. Therefore, Black Isis is Ama, the dark, sterile mother of Bina. Here we have a deep Kabbalism. Biologically, you cannot have a sterile mother from the point of view of eternal spirit. Black Isis is... Um, a shapeshifter. So that's why I saw somebody shapeshifting into all kinds of different shapes. The Divine Mother has many faces, many shapes. Um, so she's connected to Maya, Gaia, Haya, Sophia, Maria, all of these goddesses all in one. To see through the veil of Isis is to see through Maya. Matter. So Black Isis is the personification of Bina and therefore Mother, the elements of the wise. But she's more than this. She is the fire, which is why you have this symbol. This is called the fire tetrahedron. The fire tetrahedron is the fire of Black Isis. Where before we were on a microcosmic level and an avatar that was like a scarecrow. On a macrocosmic level, you are the mirror of Isis. In a higher world, she is you, you are her. You, all you have to do is know that your hand isn't your hand. That you have, in, you have a spirit within you that can activate some very magical things if you just practice it a little more. You are a diviner. You are a prophet. And you are connected to Lucius. So let's go on. You're connected to the great mother of the four worlds. Every life form can only continue in existence and embodiment while it receives or retains enough energy to replenish its structure. Black Isis is smaller to the Tibetan meditational deity and the diamond sow. Okay. So when you're looking at this shape right here and you were to turn this one upside down, it makes a diamond. This diamond is all about your Merkaba, your chariot of fire. Really, what, I'm going to just speak plainly. Practice strengthening your spiritual power daily 
or at least as much as you can because you have something inside of you that is a hand that isn't your hand. That through you and through faith, through expecto patronum, you can envision certain things and begin to activate some magical things and jumpstart this world. I see you as a jump starter, like a spark. So let's look and see what else she said. She is the hidden one. This goes back to being cloaked with that triangle is hiding and invisibility. She shows herself as a pillar of fire, which is that triangle. Her children were exiled into time and space. Therefore, do the wise uh, worship the black itis. I, I don't like the word worship. I would say just be aware that it's already a part of you on a multidimensional level. You and her have the same energy or mirror to access the same information. So... Don't, she says, lest we fall into the trap of thinking of these powers as essentially separate. You and her are not separate. You have the same hand. Don't think of it as separate. We are nothing. It says we are nothing and yet everything. The first something was a certain kind of cloud or darkness. What was that nothing out of which the, the first cloudy chaos was made? It may be that thou dost think it is a mere nothing, but it was Black Isis. She was the nothing who turned us into everything. So dip into your nothingness to become your everythingness and realize that you are the palace of holiness. Through, But it, it does take practice. Um, I encourage you to read the, the Tower of Alchemy and begin practicing um, a technology that is really a meditation. So let me show you what this meditation is in order for you to be everything one and nothing at the same time is your deathly hollow symbol. How do we, those of you listening, become nothing and everything? Well, it's an awakening. It takes practice. Eventually, you realize that you decide to surrender called the self-sacrifice. You decide to go through the deathless death like a caterpillar going into a cocoon. And you make it a tent that looks like this and go and delete all of the inventory of everything that you are so that you can become empty, which is zero, and allow your higher self to fill you up with proper information. Because the inventory or the mental inventory that we hold in our minds actually makes us very heavy. Especially if it's the scarecrow and it's not true. It's false. So this fire tetrahedron isn't just your cave of Brahma or your cave of meditation. It is quite literally your robe of glory. It has rules to it. Don't project your personal feelings or thoughts onto this current reality. Be quiet. Don't have low self-worth or self-importance. Don't bring the Voldemort into Hogwarts. Don't look back at mommy, daddy, why didn't you love me? You should at this point realize that you aren't just you. And that if you have the hand of God within you, then greater is God within you than you are in the world. And so through this surrender, you learn to become nothing and everything. One thing that I, I make a video where you become nothing, a grain of sand, and then everything, and then nothing, and then everything. And it's kind of like working a muscle, breathing in, breathing out like that. So the robe of glory is learning zero point energy. It's a meditation and a room and a place where you eventually become an O, an oracle. You become the voice in the hands of something greater than you. You attain the Philosopher's Stone. And then you become a diviner. <coughs> Divination is deciding what comes from your own mind and your own feelings, your avatar, 
or what comes from a higher realm. The white is always about purity and the higher realm, and the dark is always coming from nothingness and or from the lower realm. So when you know for a fact that the center is always the truth, then your wand is balanced when you know the difference between ego and spirit, flesh and spirit. Who's speaking through you? Is it true? Is it something that you read from a book and it seemed true to your avatar, but your higher self is saying no? This is you becoming a diviner. And this creates something called the deathly hollow, which is really being in the eye of a dragon. It's called the dragon eye. And in alchemy, when you are eaten by a dragon, you have entered into the hall of the gods. To be in the hall of the gods means that you are learning from wisdom that doesn't come from earth, like Edgar Cayce. Your consciousness will go to a place where you receive information not of this world. And you will have people saying, oh, how dare you? How dare you have information that that does is not from the written word? Well, here, let's go back to the song, My Way. You're going to do it your way because what's inside you is a goddess who knows the way. All right? Have confidence in that which is within you. And if you make a mistake, so what? I make mistakes all the time. I allow myself to make mistakes. As a matter of fact, I know that what I perceive as a mistake isn't a mistake. Car accident, was that a mistake? What happened when you met that person? Do you know that maybe you set a flame to that person and that person needed your flame at that time? Think not in your avatar that mistakes, arguments, scuffles, maybe saying something out of line was imperfect. Sometimes your higher self knows the way. And all this is saying to you, have confidence. Don't let the Santa Claus fly your sleigh, fly your chariot, and use your animal. You take back your power. You become the Santa. You become the Black Isis. And you become the Jiminy Cricket Christ. Birthing that Christ child and making your own Merkaba through divination, through the hands of the oracle. The black Isis, who who says that you can have the pearl of attainment. And the pearl of attainment is like the philosopher's stone. But you did have Baal on you. I always see Baal as a and the pearl of attainment is like the philosopher's stone. But you did have Baal on you. I always see Baal as a balloon. And if Baal is as a balloon... This is all it means. I, I'm going to try to speak in plain. And if Baal is as a balloon, this is all it means. I, I'm going to try to speak in plain language to you guys. The great and mighty Wizard of Oz was behind a curtain. He was a liar. He put a face with a mad face as only a head that floated like a balloon. And how did he do it? Artificial intelligence. Emerald City, zeros and ones of Emerald City. It was the inversion of 10. It was zero and one lies. So this wasn't the real God. Even this wizard who had a floating head like a balloon left in a hot air balloon, meaning that he was full of hot air. This great and mighty wizard did serve a purpose. The suffering and the sacrifices of the Wizard of Oz and the Land of Oz was so that we get the ignorant scarecrow off the cross through knowledge. This is the letter I. Narcissistic tin man stuck in their own beliefs, unable to move out of the wicked witch of the West or the Matrix, the World Wide Web. Or shame and blame lion. You don't believe as I do, huh? You don't think as I do, do you? 
you don't have the same political belief as I do, you say. You don't believe in the same God or religion as I do. Well, put them up, put them up. I'll fight you with both hands behind my back. All right, this is fighting the world, focusing on the world. We slap the lion in the face. We anoint the tin man with anointing oil. We get the scarecrow off the cross. And then these lower things are healed and suddenly pop. What pops is your dog, which was in a place that was the inversion of God, flips into a world called Emerald City, which is the real God. And your dog reveals that God was a God who only served as a matrix artificial intelligent reality in order to grow our knowledge to learn how to become nothing and everything, to be invisible, to do the hand and the will of something very ancient that has been asleep within us, like Sirius Black, the dog on Harry Potter who was in Azkaban for 12 years. It is your God and Father who is in the cells of your body until you're ready to go to Emerald City, the 13th letter in the alphabet. So this wizard isn't, isn't as evil as he does seem to be evil. I mean, obviously he let Dorothy, you know, get attacked and slapped and then said, if you don't get the broomstick, I'm not going to help you at all. Basically was ruthless, heartless, didn't seem to care. And that is what it's like in this world. But the real one is more feminine. It is like Glenda. And Glenda helps us to get over the hurdle of shame, ignorance, and narcissism through really knowledge, through an awakening. That's why the Wizard of Oz opens up in the land of Oz with flowers, little munchkins awakening out of flowers. We were short of understanding. We were in a cosmic sleep for 5,600 years. All of a sudden, Dorothy came and killed a wicked witch. This means that something that was dominating us, that was controlling our mind like a frequency, was killed. So now the munchkins were free to wake up. So now that that God, the balloon has been popped, we can now wake up. The truth that was kept from you is no longer hidden. You can become an oracle. You can be a divinate, you can uh, divine. You can use telekinesis. You can move objects with your mind. Will it take many years of training? Yes. Will it take dedication? Yes. Do you have to strengthen your spiritual muscle daily? Yes. Do you have to think thought forms of God and get into alchemy and sacred geometry and numerology? Probably. But it doesn't matter what I say. You're going to do it your way. Because your way has a golden egg that opens up and suddenly it gives you a truth within you. And people will be like, what? How did you do that? Oh, I found the kingdom of heaven within me. And learn to be invisible and not be caught by these trapped, these gods of water, these water gods. My dog, my mind, revealed the truth. And this truth set me free. And I was like, and then you got the scarecrow, the tin man, and all the, these people. Don't leave, Dorothy. We love you. Yeah, y'all are in a matrix. You aren't even real. I thought I loved you, but now I realize none of you actually exist. Ah ha ha. Why don't you take the munchkins with you? Why don't we go with you, Dorothy? Obviously, we're your family. We love you. Oh, that's because in the Matrix, you're already on the other side. When I cross over this rainbow, you're not going to look like a silly scarecrow and a tin man. You're going to look like my aunt and my uncle and people I've known for a long time. So you'll be there, but you'll be in a different form. All right, so I do love you because you will be over there on the other side, but you won't be like a freaking doll, all right? So this is it. This is the truth, you guys. Welcome to the truth. And the truth is numerical. It is so many things. I have seen this God ball in a lot of y'all's readings. And sometimes it's just a floating balloon, a floating head. And this means that y'all are under the illusion of the gods of suffering or you're mirroring the god of suffering or you haven't woken to it yet rain gods water gods all those 
If you're ready to shift away from the gods of suffering, well then, do what must be done. What are you waiting for? You've got things to do, Missy. Step into it. Step into your trinity. Harry Potter, welcome to Hogwarts. Just gotta find your choo-choo train. Get you on that train somehow. Oh, never mind. You already have a chariot. You just gotta put it together. Well, we don't have it together right. Well, you just take your flesh, which is water, and accept your higher self, which is fire, to control you, your eternal immortal self. Okay, then what? Well, then the water and fire make steam and something invisible happens, which makes an invisibility cloak. And the steam is your power. Oh, yeah, you could even envision it if you want to. You can make it spin all around you with magic and joy and the heart of a child. It's fantastic. You're free. Yay. Wicked Witch is dead. Take a picture. Mm hmm. I do have a YouTube and you're not the only one who's asked me to record these and put them on my YouTube. If I trusted somebody to get into my TikTok account and download my three, four, five hour videos for me and upload it onto my YouTube for me, I would totally allow that because I don't know if y'all know this, but whenever I go live and it's like a five, four or five hour, it's, it's a long time. It takes a long time to download it, first of all. Second of all, I sing karaoke on here and, and YouTube goes copyright, copyright, something, something, dog side, something, something, you know, uh, like I'm a child. And, uh, anyway, maybe I should, you guys want me to put it on rumble or something? Cause that way I can just go ahead and sing my songs and not have some wicked witch trying to take our shoes and lock us up and trying to kill our dogs and put us to sleep with poppies and tell us that we shouldn't say silly words. I don't know if you guys know this, but I make all my videos 18 years and older. I should be able to say whatever I want. All right, we're all, we're all adults here. But alas, I still talk, I don't cuss, no nudity, nothing. They still restrict me even though it's 18 years and older. For what? What am I saying? So, I guess you have to be a hundred in order to know truth. You have to be a hundred, guys. Sorry. Is anyone here a hundred years old? Then you might be able to talk. <laughs> Sarcasm. Gets you nowhere. All right, we're moving on to the next. Let's sing a song. Give me your first name. I'm looking. Debbie. Debbie. I see you here. Let's see who else. Somebody who I'm, I haven't read for in a little while. Um, uh, Yeshua. Collective reading. What year will humanity ascend through the rapture? You know, I feel your energy a lot coming through. Like, I don't know if you know this, but um, let me pin your comment. Yes, you will. I will do a reading for that right now. And I am following you. Okay. You have a, a very high, uh, advanced telepathic mind. And I, I want to say something to you that I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything, but um, your mind is very powerful. So be careful. When you get around other people, you can you can accidentally try to control somebody or or can or you can polarize yourself into an idea about yourself. Always remember that you're nothing and everything. Now you can be everything, it's fine. But know when to become nothing 
and we'll do this reading for you here. And you want to know what year will humanity ascend through the rapture? Now, I want you to know that a lot of people don't believe in the rapture. You, was it you who sent me a video of this woman who said she's going to be the mother of the new earth? And she said if anyone talked against her that she would cut out their tongues and have their tongues burned because Jesus would burn their tongues. You know who cuts out tongues? Hera, the wife of Zeus, you know? And she says there's no rapture. But what she says is there's a script. So whether there's a script or a rapture or an ascension or an awakening, I don't think that those words are very different from each other. I just wanted to give you my opinion on that. All right, let's go forward. We're going to get a song and we're going to see what spirit has to say about this rapture. My, my first daughter truly believes in the rapture. She, she's all freaked out about it. My second daughter, she's not religious at all. She doesn't even believe in God. <laughs> she believes in this moment. That's all she believes. She believes in this moment and standing in your power in this moment. And I love both of their ideas. One is a very polarized, extreme religious, and the other one is not religious at all. Just believes in standing in zero point energy. And I, could, I find myself in a world of all those beliefs. I'm like, I'm like in a candy store. Oh, hello. Do you believe in the rapture and you're religious and you believe that you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and be anointed by the blood of Christ? I'll play with you. We'll have fun. I'll believe. Blah, blah, blah. We'll have a little dinner and I'll totally believe you. Then I can go into the room of my, my daughter who's like, I believe nothing. I believe in zero point energy. I believe in this moment and standing in the power of this moment. I'm like, totally sold on that. Totally believe you. All right. But that's me as an oracle. I am nothing and yet everything. I am no one and yet everyone. I, I, when I read for you guys and I get that Jesus Christ energy, that's what comes forward and that's what's true for me and for you at that time. If it's not Jesus Christ, it's Yeshua. Fine. That's what I see. That's what the truth is. If it's Krishna, if it's Vishnu, if it's Buddha, what, whomever I'm reading, I'm a mirror. I totally am in the sanctuary of someone's belief. Totally vibe with it. I don't polarize myself in that way. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Let's get a song, though. All right, I don't know why this song is, it's, this is about the word dream, I guess. And it's old. Ah ha ha. Welcome to my old world, people. The rapture, we want to know. I could have a mansion that is higher than the tree. I could have all the gifts I want Who's never as please I could fly to Paris Oh, it's at my beck and call Why do I go through life with nothing at all But when I dream I dream of you Maybe someday Look 
Look at all the packages I got. What? You gonna want me to open them for you? Yeah, as long as you don't stab them. No promise. With a knife. No promise. Clowning every room. Let me sit in your chair. I could even call someone to take me to the moon. I could put my makeup on and drive them in insane. I could go to bed alone and never know his name. But when I dream. Maybe someday you will come true. Oh, my lion. Thank you. <laughs> they said it was ten feet tall. Yeah, ten feet the tall. liars. Oh, no. I, I, can't, I can't say that. All right. What is the letter Z? What number is it in the alphabet? Uh, him, 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 there's 26 letters in the alphabet? Uh, Z, that would be uh, 23. I don't know. 26. No, because there's exclamation point and question mark. Not in the, the alphabet. Yes, that's what they taught me. A, B, C. They taught me A through Z and then exclamation point, exclamation point, question mark. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That's 10. K L M N O P Q R S T. That's twenty. U V W X Y Z. Twenty six. Well, Common Core isn't the best teaching system. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I should have been your mom. I should have. I should have taught you. Mom, but it is twenty six, Nathaniel. Lived in Illinois, then. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, I I will be your mother. Well, I am your mother. What in the heck? So 20, 20, six people. I'm not going to open this because there's a lot of little bits and pieces. What is it? Oh. oh, what is it? Oh, it's my fairies. It's my lavender fairy lights. Oh, yeah. See my blue one? Here's a knock That's my blue one. I got a whole bunch of purple ones. Knock off Tinkerbell. Oh, yeah. It's a little Tinkerbell one. Oh. <laughs> Look, these are what I'm giving away for free for um for people subscribing to me. That you get a little watch. I know you're aggravated with me. Ooh. You no no the people on TikTok they they want me to get with it on the rapture. You can blame look, it on me. Yeah, look, aw, see it's a little light. You keep lit on. You got your wings. The rapture. Keep your light lit. Remember what it says in the Bible. Keep your lamp lit. This is your keep your light lit. Keep your keep your knees up against your chest. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Keep your wings. Yes. That's what y'all are going to get as my subscribers. Free. Woo. This is more of them. Oh, is it more fairies? Maybe. I did order a lot cuz I didn't know how many subscribers I had. Yeah, it's just this. Okay, that's fine. So you have a lot of bubble wrap now. Oh, thank you. I'm going to leave the bubble wrap for you. Thank you, darling. Bye-bye. 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 I don't know what this means. But I know that this was a big old bird right here. Big one. It's 2026, people. The rapture. I told you we're in the fifth hour. I'm telling you. Ooh.
sometimes I wish that I could help you guys know that I'm not somebody that that is that fibs or lies or or is just speaking whimsically and all this So there's going to be a war. And between now and 2026 is a war. Whether it's internal, spiritual, whatever, it's a battle for your soul. I told you guys, bow, dag on the fish god. These Fenrir, that one woman, the wife of Zeus, who says she's going to cut your tongue out. She's the wife of Zeus. She's not your friend. And I'm not saying that that's somebody here on TikTok. I'm just telling you that woman, Hera, H-E-R-A, is no one's friend. She buys your animal and makes you go back into duality. I'm telling you, believe me or not, it doesn't matter. Do I believe myself? I'm not quite sure. (laughs) I, I just know repetitive patterns and I know symbology and I know, I know that Something is happening, and I I know that things are, at least for me, see, now I'll be 51 this year, right? So maybe I'm just old. Maybe it's my time, right? Maybe the young people of the earth, they're not going to experience the rapture, you know? Maybe they're they're not in that realm of, of adepthood, you know? So I'm saying that for some of us, like especially for me, this is what the answer is. So for some reason, there's a blindfold over someone's eyes right here. And the blindfold is that this person is opening their skin open. Oh, this is probably why they, I guess, if y'all, y'all aren't 100 years old, you're not allowed to see this. So close your eyes if you're not 100 years old. <laughs> um, somebody is opening their belly. And inside their belly is a Christ child. Y'all, all of us are blind that you give birth spiritually to the Christ within your belly. It, you're pregnant with this Christ energy. You birth it invisibly. Your embryo is invisible. Your embryo that is invisible grows. And as it grows, this Christ births and somebody wants to take it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I had a dream that my best friend, whom I told you, is very religious, right? I was looking at her the other day. Her eyes turned slanty like a reptilian. I told you her sister came and got all messed up in front of the kids and pissed me off. Well, she wants to go with me somewhere tomorrow. I saw in a dream she wants to take my Christ child from me. I almost feel like I'm trapped with it because I already promised her that I'd go with her. She doesn't know what she's doing. I don't know how she's going to try to take that child, but I'm going to tell you something. All of you guys who are getting your third ring of power, Fenrir, what does he eat? The sun. Who's the son of God? Christ. What is it birth? Where does it birth from? Inside of you. Like being pregnant. doesn't matter if you're male or female. You have a Christ inside of you that gets birthed and you're blind to it. You don't know. Somebody knows though. Oh, yes. Who knows? Who knows this? And and once you get that Christ energy inside of you and you have those three rings of power, you begin to ascend to such a degree. But there are these beings who know this and you don't know it. Therefore, you're fooled. And they take that Christ child energy and I don't know what they do. But they do something. I think they cut it, it off where you can't have it you or something so all of you guys yeah there's a pair of scissors here i know that's Hera. i know who that is it's somebody who cuts your tongue all right it's somebody who who traps you so be careful right now right now is not the time to be playing games now is not the time to be worldly a drunk an alcoholic perverted any of that nothing 
Right now is time to be zero point energy. Joy is your strength. Keep your light lit. Keep your heart magical like a child. And, and be careful, little eyes, what you see, and little feet, what you do, and little ears, what you hear. Right now is, um, is a really big time of invisible beings who are gathering their flock into a celestial school. All right? The white bull of Mithra is always waiting to be sacrificed by who? Zeus and Hera. Why do they always sacrifice the white bull, the white lamb, the white holy dove, or the white rabbit? Y'all should know this by now. Why do they sacrifice it in these games? Well, they sacrifice seven girls and seven boys. But more than that, they'd sacrifice your bull. And that bull is your golden ticket to immortality. So you can see this letter Z is Zeus. And you can see that it's Hera who's going to cause this war. And, and she isn't in your favor. So there are some other names here. And there's something that this bird is holding. And the bird is holding a holy grail that's tipped over on its side. So what is at stake is your immortal soul, your consciousness, your awakening, your truth, your knowledge. Whether you are male or female, you are, you are pregnant with the Christ child in your belly. All right? And my friend has been asking me to hang out with her like every single day. And I'm like, oh, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. But I saw that she... I don't know. I don't know how they do it. So if you guys want to put a protection barrier over me tomorrow, it's going to be one of those things, or maybe it's a test for me. I don't know. But there are principalities and powers, people who come as wolves. And, oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. And their only purpose is to brush your hair, and you're in the tower, and they do something. And I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but I had a dream. So um, I've been trusting my dreams a lot lately. So here we go. Um, 2026. And mosquitoes. Um, one of the things that they're doing as far as the war goes is mosquitoes. And it's going to affect your third eye. So what are you guys going to do about it? Promote this? Nope. Scare everybody? Nope. Um, become paranoid and cry? Nope. Celebrate. Listen to comedy. Dance. Love live stand in your zero point energy keep your light lit what's against you is distraction what's against you is fear what's against you is hiding your child if your child within you is hidden then this will not be harmonious it will be a war so this is z spelled back this is z this way this is z that way this is a black Z. This is a white Z. There is a false thing going on and a real thing going on. For some people, um, they will not experience what we experience. So if somebody has the black Z, um, which is probably Zeus, you're not going to experience what people with the white Z who have been purified will experience. It's like some kind of timeline thing. Kind of different dimensional thing 
But anyway, seems as if there's some portal opening up, swallowing people up, kind of like a black hole. And, um, and this Christ being has his hands over his chest, like in an X position. And this is perfected man. All right. Once we've become perfected through this X here, we are, look who's up here, right? And this person is kneeling down, coming out of a portal who is a child, holding a cross, pointing the cross at the child, and then pointing at this bird, and then pointing at the bird getting the Holy Grail, right? The rapture is good and bad. If you don't have the child within you, they take your Holy Grail. That's your memory. If you have the child, then, and you've become a perfected man, then you get to cross into the higher realms, if that makes sense to you. But look at one, two, three, four. Every step has something. This is a div divination down here. This says war, and then it says he, which is Hera, backwards. Then up here is a portal that's going to be opened. And what gets swallowed is people who are in the water energy. They get swallowed into the nothing. Water people, water gods, suffering, not awoken, completely ignorant, not ready, doesn't want to wake up, too hard, doesn't believe, they get swallowed up. People who have stepped into the fire and have the child, they get to go. So you gotta look at it like that. You want me to repost this? Okay. I don't want people to be afraid. I do not want to be a proponent of spreading fear. You guys need to know. Anytime you hear about something that they, quote unquote, are doing to us, if you don't put a remedy to fight back with joy, love, giggles, magic, and sound frequency or a dance, then we are working for the dark side. You always have to put a remedy, and the remedy is the heart of a child. You're zero-point energy, and you don't care. You have no attachments to this world anymore. You've grown past it. You're ready to step into something more. You're ready to protect what much would that which must be protected, which is a knowledge that you guys have stepped into that we have been hidden from for so long that should activate us to such a degree that we are stepping into a power and that power sets us free. Your ability to fly. You should be having dreams of flying. If you're sitting, you're not going to go. You have to fly. In 2026. Thank you for the heart puff, green eye timeline. I love you. Thank you so much. I love the heart puff. I love that. It reminds me of the of the little fairies we got in the mail. And the little fairy lights we're gonna have. You turn the light on. I got I only have a couple of these blue ones left. And the reason I chose the violet one is because one of the things that we should be doing during this time of transition is envisioning this eternal violet flame over us. We were in the color blue for the longest time. And this does mean freedom, flying like a pretty, pretty little bluebird over the seven colors of the rainbow. But blue isn't gonna protect you from the wars that are gonna happen within you and without you. And violet will though. Violet is the flame, it's the color of the Holy Spirit, it's your bird. So for my subscribers, um, I'm going to be giving out these little fairies for free. Um, and, and you guys can have your violet protection. This is a reminder. All right. And this reminder is transmute negative energies. The mushroom represents transmuting negative energies. All the toxins in the world, it's fine. 
That's the job of the mushroom. You're going to take all the jerk negative energy and you're going to transmute it into joy. You're going to take all that is evil and turn it into good. You're going to pull your knees up to your chest and you're going to protect your solar plexus. This is the child in your belly. You're not going to let just anyone take that child. This is the Christ birthing within you. You're going to keep your wings. You need to fly. All right. You need to stay in your protected area. It's not time to go out and make best friends. Not time to be doing, you know, worldly things. Yeah, so I, I make uh, solar plexus videos and meditations and there's lots of, oh, I love um, Instagram. Instagram has the best meditations. Um, I make videos, lots of people, but these solar plexus videos will really help you to, to see the Christ child within you to bring that golden, but also the steam energy because Christ is oxygen and steam, like the puff the magic dragon that puffs out of the dragon and this steam energy is the smoke that is created from the divine marriage of flesh and spirit and it really does grow your embryo to three rings of power and begins to become more solid over time as we begin to practice the voice of that holy spirit within us practice the magic of the hands and the anointing and all this stuff uh through your body it is, it is something that is a spiritual muscle that has to be practiced daily, really, daily. Fasting, meditation, avoid the seven deadly sins to become more clairvoyant. Thank you. Yes. Honey, if you eat honey, actually um, increases your antenna to become more of an oracle. There's foods that can enhance your oracular abilities. Um for me, m m what activates me uh, more than anything is um, dancing and I make a salt circle to speak, okay, I, I, I want to be purified. I want to be in my zero point energy and I dance and then whatever comes to my mind, I'll make a rhyming thing and I'll rhyme it and I'll speak it and I'll make like a, my own thing. So I do my own stuff and... Um, I just try to get as joyful as I can, like happy, giggly, joyful. Oh, you do that all the time. That's so cool, DNA. That's so cool. All right. Well, I hope this answered your question. Yeshua. Um, and when you look at this, you're going to look at it as layers because these are a set of stairs. So there's things that are going to happen each layer so if 2026 is less than a year away like a little over a year i mean a little over a year right 2026 you can look at each of these as maybe six months or something each of these steps and then this is up here so i'm not exactly sure how it works but you could probably figure it out i know this represents four this represents four. Okay. You've been seeing one, four, four a lot. One four one four four is activating your your DNA. It's it's um it's con it's connected to your to electrons within your body being activated, which is really just another way of saying that you're birthing your third ring of power. You're stepping into the realm of power. Heron, H E R O N. Congratulations. I'm going to follow you back. I requested to follow you back. Do you have any specific questions?
You want to be sure how to protect yourself in your own free will. Okay. Let's find a little song for you. See what spirit has to say. You guys ever wonder why I sing to do this? If you've ever known my life story, I was put in Hawkins Lab. It was a place in Atlanta, Georgia. Before they filmed there, it was called Georgia Mental Health Institute. I was 11 years old, like the character 11. Music and singing activates a power within me. Like the static that 11 had and the blindfold she put around her head. It helps me. And it's unusual. Like, okay... Um, Mary, you have to lay in salt water with a blindfold and listen to static in order to access. Yeah, I do. I have to sing. It's the heart of my song, the song of my heart. The song of my heart is very powerful. The song of every one of your hearts are very, very powerful. And I activate that music and that song to activate my power. It's not about the ego. Listen to me sing, guys. You're going to have to hear me sing the entire time. I'm so great. I'm so awesome. It's not about self-importance. It's not about greatness. It's It helps me to activate my inner child and my power. All right, so why did I tell you about the mental hospital? Because that is like the character Eleven. She had to do certain things to be able to remote view. And my my power is or our power, or the power of me and my higher self, not mine, is um, strengthened through music. It distracts me from things, and it also keeps me, um, I don't know, in a, in a really neat place. So just be aware of that, okay? Don't get this, oh, you again, that voice again. How about shut up? I hear you, but how about no? I'm going to sing because it activates me. This is not one of my favorite songs. I really don't like Axl Rose. Um, but it doesn't matter. This is a song that is probably has something, something in it that we all need to see or hear. Wisdom, Heron. You're learning wisdom and gratitude. Be thankful in this moment in your zero point energy. Here we go. She's got a smile that it seems to me reminds me of childhood memories where everything was as fresh as the bright blue sky. me away to that special place and if I stare too long I'll probably break down and cry Of 
pain Her hair reminds me of a warm safe place Where has the child I'd riot And pray for the thunder and the rain To quietly pass me by yeah. There is a goddess from Maya, a Mayan goddess who wears a fish on her head. She's an ancient goddess. So all of your piece is all about children, sweet child of mine, all about children. And, um, uh, and I don't know what it means yet. So, um, everyone's giggling. Uh, this person's giggling with their mouth closed. There's, I know what the frog means. It's an alchemical symbol of an earthbound creature that jumps like a thief in the night and things flip to a pole shift where all of a sudden we were earthbound and now we're no longer earthbound. Where we were a caterpillar and like a thief in the night, we're no longer a caterpillar. All right. And so um, I'm going to wait for spirit to 
give me more information about what your piece is saying about you and about your power and about things for you. But um, so there's somebody named. Oh, no. Kronos. Chrono. Oh, no. Oh, no. O-N-O. And, So there's a a jerk bug that's like a, I guess you could say, at first it looked like a reptilian, and then it turned into like a mosquito the bug and this, like this, but it was a reptilian. Now... This is a grandmother energy, and I, I just am going to go ahead and say what's coming forward from this possible relative of yours is she's making a quilt of little flowers, and she's saying that the new earth is being prepared like a quilt being sewn piece by piece of eternal spring, which is the eternal flower connected to the golden age of Aquarius, that we are just, that we, that you are the bringer of this. And they're trying to tell you that joy is your strength and that you have to maintain joy in order to get there. So this is making fun of yourself, making fun of others, laughing. <laughs> I have a friend, and she was like, Mary, I had a dream about you. I'm like, go on. Oh, you had a disco ball in your room, and, and you and your family were jumping on the couch. I was like, oh, that's so funny, because we just bought a new couch. But that is so me. I do have a disco ball in my room, and that is pretty much how we operate. We laugh at everything, and we don't have drama, and we just laugh, and we just have fun, and we are very free, and we do what we want. All right, Nobody tells us what to do. We don't live by very many rules or laws. And so anyway, um, this is the vibe I get. That the, the father cow here is no longer. We're not in a patriarch. We're not in the male-dominated world that we came from. And we're entering into the new cow, which is the new earth. And the, this mother, this grandmother, she's, she, has a, she, she has a quilt. And on the quilt is a face of a lion or a, a smiling rose of sorts. Kind of reminds me of, oh, what was that show? Teletubbies. But it's surrounded by roses. And it's a quilt made of roses. And it's like, ah, ha, ha, you have no idea the new world that's being made for you. So all you have to do is catch all negative thoughts, all jerk energy, all your old thoughts, all the way we used to think, believe everything. Pretend we were in a prison and all of a sudden you're being set free. And you're so used to the confinements of what we were programmed. We have to get that fish, which is Pisces, off our head. And replace it with a pull shift that will shift like a thief in the night. And that is with the symbol of the frog, which is becoming an oracle and a sorcerer. Joy is definitely your strength. Having the heart of a child is part of why you're here. And you're here to catch all that. But for some reason, a grandmother energy is here to say, this is what you have to look forward to. Eternal bliss. Eternal happiness. The heart of a child. Being free. 
not being earthbound, going up and being and growing. And it seems to be that you're in a space right now, and this makes wings, very big wings, this little thing that's popping out of a, a caterpillar. The wings go all over your piece, all over, where it has the two eyes like Isis and, and then the four. So I would have to say that your reading is catch, leave what is negative for your higher self to catch. And you don't have to do the work. All you have to do is stay happy. All you have to do is have the heart of a child. Joy is your strength. Many shifts are going on right now. And what and what we need to have above our head is, is the mind of our higher self at this time. You are the bringer of this new earth and this new world. And you're your thoughts are very, very important. Because see, that frog was right here. And it jumped up. It jumped up like a thief in the night. And they say, it's going to be so fast when this happens. You'll wake up and... Na, 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 na. And you hear the birds. Where am I, Toto? This doesn't look like Kansas at all. Oh, hello. I'm Glenda. You came down in a pink bubble. How about give me one of those bubbles? That would be great. We don't want to be earthbound. I'm going to show you a book that speaks of these frogs a lot. And it's an alchemical book and an alchemical understanding of the toad or the frog is a very significant um, communication of your transcendence. The salamander means you're a sorcerer. So you see that salamander in the fire? That means um, your sorcery abilities are being on fire. But the frog, it jumps from earth to, to sky, and you go, okay, that's not possible. But it's, it's a communication of a pole shift, things flipping around. Now, the fish on your head, it doesn't really give me the feeling of Pisces. It, 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 it reminded me of a Mayan goddess. And so we're going to look into that. And you might like to know that the Mayans revere a goddess who looks like a frog. She's called the squatting woman. And she's an oracle. And she um, helps. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, my word. Now I know what it is. Oh, my gosh. The Mayan goddess who has the fish on her head has a god as who is the squatting woman because the squatting woman is getting ready to birth. Birth what? A new earth, a new self. They squat. But when the when the frog is down here, it's it's incubating, it's being made. Up here the 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 caterpillar is still in a cocoon a little bit. The squatting I got to find it. We got to find it. I don't know if I could find it again because it was so long ago that I, I, I looked this up. So it's, a, it's, it's from Maya. Mayan myth squatting woman frog. So it's an amphibian goddess and she is depicted as a squatting in like a toad position with legs ornamented like iguanas. Yeah, so she's right here. And so this Mayan goddess, she has a fish on her head. So why are you connected to the Mayans? I don't know. So let's see. So they went to this place and they found this old building, this ancient building, and and they were the indigenous people of Mesoamerica 
see the natural world as a place populated by ancestors, which I saw a grandmother, that's an ancestor, and, and supernatural beings. I do see supernatural beings. This fluffy looking thing and that thing, that's supernatural. Then um, they spotted an amphibian goddess. And they were like, what is this amphibian goddess that looks like a frog? And she is a Mayan deity. And her name is Ix T-Z-U-T-Z Sock, S-A-K. The goddess is depicted squatting in a toad-like position with legs ornamented with iguanas and toads. No other structure looks like this building. So when you walk into this place, you are entering into the, the realm of the temple of this amphibian goddess and this sweat bath. This goddess suggests that it is responsible for the gestation cycles. Suggest that it is responsible for the gestation cycles, both of time and of human life, linking notions of birth of reptilian figures. That's why I saw a reptile over here. I don't know. It it was a mosquito, but it's a rept. It was a reptile. However, it's not common among the classic Maya, as they express the the verb to birth as an upended reptilian mouth glyph. A mouth. Yeah, so it's a mouth. So don't take this as Pisces. This mouth that's opened up is the glyph of the mouth of giving birth. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So it's called the reptilian mouth glyph. And this is a reptilian goddess, but this doesn't mean reptilians like you guys think of the alligator reptilian narcissistic jerk guys. This is more about um, Emerald City and the green color and um, uh, fairy beings, elf beings, forest beings, pond beings, flowers decorated around beautiful springs and the little frogs and dragonflies who sing songs. And the singing ones, especially the toads, are fantastic. I, I made a hobbit house and I made a pond. You wouldn't believe how many crickets and frogs sing and how loud they are. They're so loud. They even live inside my hobbit house and they, they like come out and they're like, thank you for the house. And I'm like, Keep it clean, people. So, let's see. So, they found bones there. And they even found bones of a child there. And an infant. So, frogs and iguanas... So, the supernatural fig figure is the ferocious embodiment of the earth. So, when you see a cow or a bull, it really represents Gaia or earth. So, the old earth, look, this looks like an old bull. And this is passing away. The new is being made as a quilt. And we are at a very, we're at the edge here, people. The, 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 the head of the, of the, um, caterpillar has popped out and that little baby cow that's the new earth the quilt has been sewn the ancestors are there the squatting position is in the gaping mouth on trapping what what is trying to get in to interfere with this birth ignited and so basically you come you came here from the mayans according to your piece and the ancestors have brought you here to remind you and everyone else that the only way for this full manifestation of this new earth 
To be harmonious and balanced is through joy. The heart of a child, this person's laughing. And they have their thumbs up, like thumb up. Like, good job. So you have a, you have a, um, I guess if I were to try to speak the voice of this goddess, I'll try. It's something that I'm trying to strengthen. I'm trying to strengthen my ability that when we bring the, the, this Mayan goddess forward, instead of just seeing it, I'm going to try to speak what this goddess says. And I could fumble and make mistakes. So let's just have fun with it. Take it for entertainment, whatever. Let's let her talk through my tongue and say, she says, first of all, and and she's talking through me, but she's also showing, she says, everything is going to be okay. She says, um, that everything has been finished. She says, it's done. She says, When, when you're about to give birth, it's very painful. The wars that you are about to see are only an echo of the pain of this birth. The contractions are going to come and go. One after the other. Closer and closer together. Until like a thief in the night. It happens. The twinkling of a star, the soft rain falling on a petal flower, you probably won't even notice. All of the uncomfortable feelings that we are having is how we love the earth. She is rebirthing and so are you to help her birth all of you should sit in a squatting position pretend like you're in labor you're having contractions but while you're having a contraction instead of acting like you're in pain act like it feels great and be the divine mother of when we see the world in pain They're going through a a contraction. When we see people upset, they're going through a contraction. Be the divine mother that gently holds the hand and says, okay, you got through it. Okay. Let's remember that we're in joy. Let's remember to breathe. Let's remember that we are, you're the midwife. Let's remember that this is just part of it. Oh yeah, it hurts. Is there anybody, is there an anesthesiologist in the room? Hello? All right, because this is BS. I'm going to have to go through this. You know, thanks the gods for giving us labor. Thanks. Yay. We're in a simulation. Who wrote that program? Um, you're the midwife that is helping the world. Remember that the only reasons that we're seeing so much chaos and so much pain and so much misunderstanding and so much hysteria and so much group psychosis and so much uh, where it almost feels like people are going insane is the earth is going through labor and so are you. And you're either going to experience it as happy day, sad day, mad day, good day, whatever. That's what contractions are. Pain, 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 pain. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, it's gone. Please don't let it come back. Oh my God, don't want it to come back. I do not want that pain. Oh, here it comes. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I hate you. Why did you do this to me? You get this anger feeling. Totally don't blame you. Totally don't. Like if you, all of you guys start feeling, you know, whatever. That's what the contractions feel like. If you feel upset if you feel if you even feel paranoid or even like if you have a um anxiety attacks it's because you don't have a divine mother holding your hand going this is normal breathe through it breathe through it this is normal all the feelings that you're having normal anger 
totally normal. Hate God, normal. Hate yourself, hate the world, normal. Can you, will it end? Yes. Can I go back to being joyful and happy? Yes. Is it temporary? Yes. Is it painful? Yes. Is, you're going to get through it. You're the bringer of eternal spring. It's painful to get there, but it will. You're going to be okay. So says your ancestors. Catch all your negative thoughts like in a net. And don't let all the negativity overwhelm you. You are the midwife. You have this, you're pregnant with love. You're pregnant with a new earth of love. She has the number 13. Aren't you fantastic? Don't we all want to give you a hug? So the website that this came on is, um, let's see here, is Amphibian Goddess. And I don't know if she has a name, but let's just Google Amphibian Goddess. Oh, it's UO. Her name is UO. That's what I saw. Something, something UO or NO or something like that. So this is, this is you. The frog. That's a frog. This is, this is your higher self. Now, this person found the amphibian goddess in Belize in limestone caves. It's still Mayan. Oh, look at the big old frog. <laughs> they, uh, so, so this frog has a courtship song. And supposedly it's really cute. They're good at digging. Wonderful. We don't care. And look at it. What in the world? I've never seen a frog like that before. So I don't see that it had that. Okay, so UO is just this goddess. But I'm just going to tell you. It doesn't matter what they say about this particular frog or this goddess. I'm going to tell you. This goddess represents that there will come a day when the frog sits as in the squatting position. The ancient way of giving birth. And get ready to birth the new cow. Which is the new earth. Which is this baby cow right here. So take a picture. Oh, I know what this also means. You have to you have to you have to feed the frog. And the frog eats bugs. The frog eats mosquitoes. Frogs eat mosquitoes. So how do you feed the new earth? Joy. The only way to feed your higher self and the new earth is through the heart of a child in joy. This is going to make it happen a lot easier. If you're an anesthesiologist, what are you going to inject in the, the body of the earth to make her not feel pain? Joy. Bring up your joy, people. You hope I repost it? I know. Oh my gosh. I know. I'll try. Somebody else texted me today and she was like, Dearest Mary, hi. Um, I know you're very busy. We all know. We know you're very distracted. We know. But I can't tell you how much I really want you to repost the video from September 12th. And um, thank you and I love you. And, um, and I could feel... You know, it was so kind and so respectful, but there was something like, repost the video. We want it. 
like really bad. And I'm like, it's freaking five hours. YouTube is a jerk. They don't let me sing my songs. Oh my word. You know, I need, I need help. I need somebody to do it for me or something, but I'll try today. I will try. I will do that. And I will try to repost it. And if I get a strike for it, then I'll give you guys a grumpy face the next time I see you. A frowny face. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. Oh, you will have a great time going back into the Eden, the days of Eden. Yes, I'll, re I'll pin your comment. Yes, thank you. It'll be so great. Yes, joy, 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 joy. So you guys are asking for a reading, but you're not giving me your first name. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. Did I just read for you, Cindy, not too long ago? Oh. Yeah, the friends, the NRA animals. Yeah, they're going to be supposedly talking and everything. Oh, yes. You guys can pay for a reading at forestfairy.com, but there is a bit of a wait time. The reason I, write, I, I read for you guys is I, I try to, uh, it's the benefit of being a subscriber. You get a free reading. These readings cost between $50 and $100 a piece. Now, when you get a free reading, I will not, I usually don't make a, a video because it takes too long and too much of my time. So, you know, you will get your answer, but you won't get a video that's colored and painted where you can see it in its beauty in its entirety. Um, but anyway, that's how it goes. Do Jules? Where's Jules? You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Echoed. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you've written a couple of letters like that. You're like, dearest Mary. I really, really don't want to ask you this, but, and I get it because I am busy and I'm like, what now? <laughs> and you're all like, we love you, Miss Hannigan. You're so welcome. Let's see. Dut, dut, dut. I'm looking. You're so welcome. Do, do, do. Christy, I'll follow you back. Thank you for following me. K R I S K R I S T I. I didn't see Jules. I looked. We'll do Christy, and then if Jules is here, we'll do Jules. Let's get a little song going for you, Christy. Missy, Christy. And um, let's see, a little card for you. Hope. Number 40, you have hope. Yay. Don't lose hope. All right, here we go. Song for you. Forbid love ever leave you empty. 
empty-handed I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean Whenever wonder closes, I hope wonder opens Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance Ever settle for the path of the least resistance? Living might mean taking chances that we're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Go let some helping heart leave you bitter. When you get close to selling out. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance I hope you Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance Oh, finally, Santa Claus is gone. What everyone is going to be given this Christmas isn't a box under a Christmas tree. What you're going to be given is an opportunity in the very, very near future to not see January. You're not going to be reset. You're going to see 13. You're going to be given the crown and the castle. You're going to be given freedom. Christy is the bringer of this. She literally switched the Santa Claus, the bearded man, the Santa Claus that is the upside down of Saturn. The bottom part of Saturn is dominated by male patriarch. 
Saturn emits a plasma that looks like a, a white bearded man. But when we go through a pole shift, oh no, when we go through a pole shift, everything changes to its opposite. So then the divine feminine is the one flying the sleigh, not the Santa. And the goddess of Saturn was always a female. If you have seen or known that Saturn was actually the bringer of eternal spring and the bringer of Aquarius and the golden age of Aquarius, Saturn, the Lord of the golden age, the bottom part of Saturn is Santa Satan, a patriarch, gods of suffering, frequencies of suffering, interrogation, diminishing humiliation. But when we go through a pole shift, the opposite is true. And whether you are from Germany, Iceland, Persia, um, Asia, if you're Asian, wherever you are, the, the most ancient description of Saturn was the star of abundance, the paradise of plenty. The, in Hinduism, it is called the good age. It is the true age, true which means this one isn't true, and the golden age. Saturn is known to the doggone tribes as Bibi Deba, the good and perfect star. So in Persia, they know Saturn as the king of heaven, or time, the king of time, which is the male. But when we go into a flipping, it changes into the divine feminine, and the divine feminine is a goddess of Saturn, where the description of Saturn isn't a male, it is a female. And this female brings us back into the golden world or the golden age, where we were asleep and called the cosmic winter, which is the snow, for 5,600 years. And so the 12th month is a promise that we put the star on top of our Christmas tree, illuminating our rainbow light body, the solidification of the snow or the ice of the purification manifesting within our flesh, activating electrons where your animal is no longer a bitten apple, but Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer who helps you to fly where you aren't selling your flight to these gods anymore. They are no longer going to cut your animal from you, taking your Rudolph and using it for their sleigh. No, the divine goddess is here as a promise of the mother who, who is instinctive, who is empathetic, who is knowledgeable, who, who, who cares about her children. So the artificial intelligent wizard who used artificial intelligence to father us is no longer going to be that cold, calculating non-feeling jerk father we're going to experience the divine love of our true mother which is the really true golden age known as the perfect age age of happiness harmony peace prosperity and joy and guess what ah ha ha christy's here to bring that so let's look a little bit deeper you have this beautiful flower it looks like a poinsettia and the poinsettia may have a communication and the poinsettia flower may be a spiritual communication but definitely the poinsettia so you're here to bring the golden crown and you're also here what is that is is that what is that there are there there are, there are um there are people seated around a table okay and they're all in chairs, but be aware that these tables and these chairs, they are a tower. All right, so this tower that is being created is a table. All right, and there's masters at the master's table at the top of this tower. And so you're the bringer of Mary Magdalene also. Um, so, wow, finally, every single reading I've had, I've seen Santa 
and as a male bearded and no now the female has entered this is good guys this is really really good uh and also this is a hummingbird dipping its beak into the center of this golden table like golden honey and it's a hummingbird and the hummingbird is flapping its wings drinking from this table and to speak in a language that oh you got a lot of deer that um Oh, so this deer is, was turned around the wrong way. And this is about you, Christy, sitting back and realizing that now you have a higher self. And this little deer says, okay, you have three rings. You, you are, this, this ring of power is smaller than these two. So you're learning wisdom, power, and understanding, which is your three rings of power. And this, this little deer was going the wrong way. However, that ring of power, which is your third ring of power, is about letting go. And it's about knowing that your deer is going to pull you exactly where you need to go. How do you get your higher self, the Holy Spirit, the ascended masters, to how do you trust them? Well, you have to know that you feed them. So on Dasher, on Dancer, on Comet, on Cupid. Um, so on is O-N, right? And he calls out the names of each deer, right? So if your ascended masters have a name and you are saying on, not off, um, O, oh, the little O's here. Um, you speaking and commanding is part of it. So don't pray in a fear-based way. Don't say please or anything. Be aware that your voice isn't your voice anyway. So with the heart of a child, not with anger, not with, you know, this, you better do this or else kind of vibe. You're going to speak in commands. Give us today our daily bread. Lead us to not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. All right, and then you're going to say on with this and on with that. And this, you know for a fact that the voice that's speaking through you isn't your voice. It's the voice of the one who is immortal and is a time traveler, which is your hummingbird. So this is about you having confidence. Again, you guys, this is about confidence. That you, you're bringing the golden crown. You're bringing the, the, the new kingdom. You, you are seated at the master's table. There's a master's table here and a master's table here. This one is the golden age with the golden honey that the hummingbird is drinking. And you learning from the, the glyph of these master's tables, you have three tables you're learning from. So listen, Goldilocks. You shouldn't have a bed that is big like daddy and medium like mommy and little like baby. All right. Your three rings of power should all be the same size, not daddy, mommy, baby. All three of your, your rings of power, whether it's these three or these three, are learning to balance themselves through wisdom, power, and understanding. And there's things that you can read to get you to perfect the glyph of your table. So the glyph of the table is an awakening that is a truth that you have come to be able to, two minutes, okay, okay, that you've been able to finally be able to accept and understand without, without it hurting you or without it confusing you. So you're at the precipice where you can begin to work at the glyph of your table and this is just about the divine unity of these three worlds and your creative powers that emanates from your actions, your thoughts, and your words. Realizing that your vehicle, your chariot, is simply a body for the immortal ones 
to move through. And if it's Hathor, if it's Isis, if it's Mother Mary, if it is the great queen of the north, Glinda, which would be, you know, the bringer of Saturn and all that, then you call out their name. And by saying on Hathor, on Isis, on Jesus Christ or Yeshua, whatever you want to call them, and you call them forward through your voice and then they lead you and direct you in that wisdom and understanding. And all you have to do is have confidence with the heart of a child, of course, you can do it with laughter, that these commands are now suitable for your voice. You're not unworthy to speak these things. Now you're worthy. So when you command it, they are going to look at you and say, you also have to know how to feed this invisible, this invisibility. And part of your feeding them is maintaining zero point energy, joy and balance through your thought, word and action. So this is wisdom, power and understanding. You're learning how to balance your triketra. So working at the glyph of the table is called the round table where you begin to affect various intentions. So they tell you to put um, a sigil or a sign or the Holy Grail on the table. And there's many tables. There's the table of the hosts of the fairy. There's the starry table of the great Shalom. And these bring about your spirit guides. But for the sake of time, you can read the Tower of Alchemy about this. And now it's time for you to work the muscle of your spiritual knowledge. So I'm going to read to you how to work your triketra. Um, the triketra is blue, pink, and gold, which I think it has something to do with all these vesica piscuses. You're learning how to grow your flower of life. If you want to look up the poinsettia, there may be a spiritual meaning behind it. Um, but let's look at the spiritual tri triketra. So the triketra is very profound. It represents unity of pro and protection and eternity. It is your eternal, eternal, um, immortal golden ticket to the golden age of Aquarius. So the three interlaced arcs are three, called three vesica piscuses or three eyes or Joseph, Mary, Jesus, or Osiris, Isis, and Horus. And it represents body, mind, and spirit. And it's and it's unbroken eternal line of strength and love. But there's more of a science that goes into it than that, which isn't just um, the Trinity, not from the Celtic tradition. Um, so, so, people say it represents the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No, you can't have three males. It doesn't work that way. That's not how the universe balances itself. It's mother, father, child. All right. So um, they want to try to polarize this with the Santa Claus. Sorry, it's not happening. Okay. So this is the interconnectedness of the three realms. This is more my style here, what they're, what they're explaining. And they're going to help me give you words. So it is about balancing your three rings of power. It's about not being polarized. Really, I'm going to tell you what it's about. It's about not being polarized by the thief or the liar. It's not being polarized by too much spirituality or too much worldly materialism. It's about maintaining a balance in such a way, but also trust. I get a lot of trust with this reading. And trust your higher self. Trust that your higher self will come through for you. A little at a time. Little baby steps. One day you'll say, hey, higher self. If you're really there, let me see a dragonfly or a feather on the ground. Or something in particular. And then your higher self will do it. Or you'll say, higher self. If you're really here, then let somebody in my outer world s repeat this number 32 to me or whatever. And you, and they will eventually. Maybe it'll be someone on TV, but it will. And then you'll realize, oh, okay. 
All right, so all I have to do now is know how to work my thoughts, my actions in perfect balance. One thing my higher self team, the, the people, the invisible ones who work with me is they really, really put a lot of importance on your actions. They say, you can say whatever you want with your tongue, but if your actions don't prove it, you are a liar and you can't be a thief or a liar. So I was told to clean my house, clean my car, clean my diet, clean my relationships, even clean my thoughts before I went to sleep and began to retrain my brain to have thought forms of God, which was inclusive of frequency, sound, and sacred geometry. And envisioning a fire tetrahedron over my head is really important because when you do these visualizations, you literally feed the spirit world with that fire. And then by extension, as above, so below, you become, you get more life force through this interaction. And this is a give and take relationship of learning how to feed your spirit. But for you, it's really about trust. So trust that this deer was flying in the wrong direction, but you've got a steering wheel here. And it's like, you, you, you're not in control. Now your invisible ones are helping you and they're going to start ha helping you in such a way that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything that you want will be added unto you. You don't have to try to control everything. There is a zero point divine order to everything and it's right down the center. It's balance. So I'm sorry I was going to read for Jules, but unfortunately my family said dinner. So it's dinner time. I have to go and help out in some way. Um, but take a picture and take a screenshot and share it. Share it on your page. Paint it. Show everybody how you painted it. Find some new things in here that I didn't see. Look for some stuff. Play with it and take it as a sacred reading from your higher self to you to maintain balance and to trust that everything is in divine order and you're going to be okay. Your higher self currently is a hummingbird. You know what a hummingbird is? Time traveler. Oh, opening portals to new worlds. What? The only and if bird you. That can fly in any direction. Yeah, and the only bird that can fly in any direction because. And that's what makes him a time traveler. I can fly backwards through time. So I'm going to say this one last thing. Um, what are you smoking? Nicotine. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Uh-uh, I smell something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know I don't like that. I don't like you smoking that. It's not good for your brain. It's good for Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, this honey is ma increases your oracular abilities. And pushes you further into the golden age of Aquarius. No sugar, honey. No coffee, tea with honey. All right? All right, love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. I had a wonderful time. And just be aware, my subscribers, we're going to have a wonderful Christmas. You're going to open up something wonderful this year. Things are going to get better. You're okay. Maintain your balance and your joy. And we're going to see miracles soon. And um, I've got presents for you. And we're going to share and have a great time. You're not alone. The Divine Mother is always there and is intuitive. And we're starting to all take care of each other in that balance. So do your research, but also make sure you put your phone down and go outside. Mommy says so. Okay. Love you so much. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> 2 o'clock p.m. Central. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.